Well, good evening. On behalf of the 55,000 members of the American Counseling Association, an organization that represents professional counselors and counselor educators, we are so honored to be part of Time to Thrive. More importantly, we are so pleased to see so many of you at this event because in a lot of ways what we hope is that all of you will be giving voice to those who don't have one or to be giving guidance and strength to people who aren't sure they should share their voice. So that's what professional counselors do. They work with millions of children, adolescents, young adults each and every day. So when HRC asked us if we would be interested in being a co-presenting partner, we jumped at that opportunity because it fits so well with our mission and what we do. It was really our leadership who was so insistent that we engage in projects like this. And one of the people who was probably the most vociferous about it is with us tonight. And so I'm going to ask that Dr. Sarisi West Olatunji, our president, stand up to be recognized so that we can thank her for her commitment and her dedication. Sarisi. And I think we'd be remiss, as others have already said, about how much appreciation we have for Vinnie Pompey and the other members of the crew who did so much to get us to this point tonight. You know, like Princess and I are up here, but we're the end result of thousands and thousands of hours of things that went on behind the scenes. So we really appreciate everything that they did. I guess the last thing I want to just say is that I am so honored that the American Counseling Association could be here with all of you tonight. And that while we can celebrate some things that have gone on, we're here because we want to connect with everyone and see what we can do over the next several years to make sure that a community that has been so abused and harassed and bullied doesn't have to live with that ever again. Enjoy the conference. Hello and good evening. On behalf of the National Education Association, I bring you warm greetings. We are indeed excited and honored to serve as a conference co-presenter for this inaugural event. NEA has been fighting for the rights of our nation's LGBTQ students and educators for four decades now. And we're going to keep fighting because we believe that every student has the right to learn in a safe environment and that every good educator has the right to work in a safe environment. It's just that simple for us. Twenty-six years ago, one of my college classmates told me one day that he had something to tell me. His name was Chris Barnett. I thought to myself, what could Chris possibly want to tell me? We see each other every day. He shared something that I will never forget. It was two words that I never thought that I would hear Chris say. He said to me, princess, I'm gay. Well, I said, oh, thank goodness. I, I thought you were going to tell me my hair was a mess or something. You know, I was a college, <laughs> I was a college student. I couldn't afford good hair back then. Anyway, <laughs> not that I can on a teacher's salary, but anyway, you get my point. <laughs> but you see, Chris made this statement to me during a much uglier time in America for gay people a time of extreme condemnation rather than love and affirmation. But what was most important to me in that particular moment was the fact that he trusted me enough to share. Like many of our LGBTQ students, he wore a mask 
and it hidden in the shadows for too long because there is usually no one around to say, it's okay, I'm here for you, or simply, I love you for you. Many of our LGBTQ students remain marginalized and bruised because there are too many of us that choose to do what's popular instead of what is right. What is right is to fight. From that day forward, I have chosen to do what is right and fight and fight even in the face of hate mail, threats, and risks to my own career. As a teacher, I stood for and with students and educators who are being bullied and attacked because of their LGBTQ status. During my first year as president of the Virginia Education Association, we took a stand against Virginia House Bill 751, which defined marriage as between a man and a woman. We lost that fight, but they heard us loud and clear. And I am proud to stand you before you today to say that we have an attorney general and a federal judge who say that the ban on gay marriage is unconstitutional in the Commonwealth of Virginia. My work has continued as a leader at NEA. I helped work on NEA's new business item D called Justice for All, which started out, yes, some of you are very familiar with that, which started out as a, as a it was a controversial new business item, but be, it ultimately became our reaffirmation of our commitment to our proud legacy of promoting social justice and equality of education opportunity for every student and professional status for every teacher and education support professional, regardless of race, gender, or sexual orientation. I am proud of the work that we have accomplished at the NEA. It, it is clear that we stand at a defining moment in the history of the LGBTQ civil rights movement. It's a time of transition from an age of intolerance and injustice toward an age of enlightenment. And transition is never easy. It's shameful that in the second decade of a new millennium, LGBTQ youth are still being bullied and harassed into suicide. And it's shameful that dedicated educators, whom Lord knows we can't afford to lose, are still in danger of losing their jobs for being openly gay. But President Barack Obama's inaugural words are still ringing in our ears. We the people declare today that the most evident of truths, that all of us are created equal, is the star that guides us still, just as, it, just as it guided our forebears through Seneca Falls and Selma and Stonewall. Our president went on to say, our journey is not complete until our gay brothers and sisters are treated like anyone else under the law. For if we are truly equal, then surely the love we commit to one another must be equal as well. So thank you, President Obama, for reassuring us that we are on the right side of justice and equality. And I must also say, I must also say thank you to all the people who over the years have spoken out and acted up for gay rights and equality. It is you right here in this room, the agitators, the activists, the, advocate, the advocators who have brought America to this point in our history. We have come a long way in the struggle for LGBTQ equality, but that journey is far from being finished. Thank you, and now I would like to turn the program over to my three good friends and colleagues, the officers of the National Education Association. Thank you very much. Thank you, Princess. Good evening, conference participants. My name is Dennis Van Roekel, president of the National Education Association. 
On behalf of the three million members of the NEA, I want to extend my welcome to you to the Human Rights Campaign's inaugural Time to Thrive Conference. The NEA is thrilled and honored to be a co-presenter of this extremely important and timely conference. And I extend my thanks to HRC for all the hard work and time it took to make this conference a reality. And a special thanks to Conference Chair Vinnie Pompey. You may have moved your advocacy work, but you never leave the NEA family. As Princess said, NEA has long been at the forefront of the LGBTQ equality movement, and our commitment only grows stronger. We believe it's time for our schools to embrace and celebrate everyone, regardless of their race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, or gender identity. It's time for safe and supportive schools that inspire students to thrive and educators to be effective. As educators, we know this is the real secret to successful and dynamic schools. And now here is NEA's Vice President, Lily Eskelson Garcia. Buenos dias a todos. I may not be in the room with you, but I'm there in spirit and solidarity, sharing that vision of a world in which all, all, all children thrive and all are welcome. And that's why we're so excited to partner with the HRC on the Welcoming Schools Initiative, an elementary school program that acknowledges the wonderful diversity and complexity of of our modern families and students, seriously. I mean, how many families these days look like June and Ward Cleaver or Claire and Cliff Huxtable? I wanna talk about Bert and Ernie. Come on, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, if we're going to create classrooms and communities where there's respect for all people, the conversation about the impact of name calling and bullying has to start with the little guys. It has to start in elementary school. But that's just the beginning. In addition to partnering with HRC on school climate, we're also working to improve the political climate around LGBTQ issues. The scope of our work ranges from kindergarten to Congress. I ran for Congress once on a platform that I had worked for 20 years with 12 year olds. There is no better preparation for working with Congress. And, and I mean no disrespect to 12 year olds. Despite the challenges, we've actually had significant victories in so many areas, personally, even in my home planet of Utah. I never could have imagined that my son Jeremy would have the legal right to marry his partner, Mike. According to the federal government, he did. And now they are one of those 1,000 legally married couples in Utah who will bring their fight for equal protections for their families to the Supreme Court if they have to. This is such an exciting time in the LGBTQ movement, and NEA is thrilled about working towards that future in which all our blessed children are considered precious and all children thrive. But I'm not the only proud PFLAG mom in the house. Uh, here we also have Becky Pringle, the NEA Secretary Treasurer and a member of this conference's House Committee. Hello, social justice patriots. I'm so sorry I can't be with you, but I am thrilled that we have Princess and a host of other NEA members proudly representing us. I am honored to serve as a member of the conference host committee because it is indeed a time to thrive. As a very proud parent of a newlywed daughter, who would never have been able to legally marry the love of her life just a few years ago. The work we continue to do to ensure LGBTQ rights is very personal to me. We had a beautiful Cancun wedding. You gotta check out Say Yes to the Dress episode, La Quette Picks a Fun Dress. But it's my daughter Lauren's right to be safe, supported, loved, and protected that we must continue to fight for every day for everyone. While NEA has been at the forefront of the LGBTQ equality movement for years, this conference and our partnership with HRC elevates our work and commitment to an even higher level, one that will continue long past this conference. I know 
what happens in Vegas, at this conference that is, won't stay in Vegas. What happens at this conference must, and I know will, be broadcast throughout the country by you, all the committed and caring activists in this room. It is you who will continue to lead this movement forward to create not just a nation, but a world where equality and social justice is for everyone and not a privileged few. Because while we may have made significant strides in the past few years, we still have significant work to do. I pledge that the NEA will be right alongside with you as an equal partner in shaping a future we can all be proud of. And you can hold me to that. I know our NEA members will. Kudos and a big thanks to Vinny and to everyone at HRC for your work and ongoing commitment. Have a fabulous conference.